and welcome back to Window Shop with Car and Driver. This is, I think, our sixth episode. Today we decided we were going to go through Car and Driver history and everyone was going to go shop for the best version of their very first car. So there's a lot to talk about today, so we'll just jump right into it. And we're going to start with Tony Caroga. Tony is our editor of testing. He's out in California. Tony, what have you got for us today? Um, let me just share my screen here. My first car was a 1991 Volkswagen GTI 16 valve. So it's the 134 horsepower, two liter one, the very last of the second generation. Came with a bunch of cool stuff like BBS wheels, Recaro seats. This is one that VW actually owns in Montana Metallic that I've been trying to weasel my way into because I want to experience it again. Uh, the only pictures I have of my car are, oh, I think I just unshared. The only pictures I have of my car are of this collage that I took a photo of. I don't have the actual pictures anymore, but you know, I went to sort of an artsy school, so we did lots of dumb stuff like this. And yours was that, that was yours, the red one? Yeah, I had it in tornado red. Um, absolutely wonderful car. In the first two weeks that I owned it, I'm sorry, in the first month that I owned it, I had two speeding tickets. Uh, so I had to sort of, uh, sort of curb my enthusiasm after that. I got one for, I was written up for 60 and a 50 and then a 58 and a 25 when I was just, you know, having a little too much fun. They're kind of hard to find. I couldn't really find one for sale right now. Um, absolutely gorgeous car though, I have to agree. Um, hey, Tony, was the 16 valve a, um, was there also a, an eight valve GTI at the time? There was an eight valve GTI at the time, uh, which I think had, 90 some horsepower 94 horsepower and that one actually finished second in a comparison test car and driver never actually tested one of these but uh road and track did test one of them and it did 60 and 84 but they were running 87 pump gas instead of the recommended uh, 93 i almost wrote them a letter but i resisted you should have back when i was a child uh 10.8 compression ratio so they complained about knock anyway so i looked on vw vortex there was a montana metallic one for sale with a lot of miles, they want 8,500 for it. I looked through the photos. The original BBS wheels are long gone. Those were usually gone pretty fast after the first or second owner. Um, but the Recaro seats are still in it. And these are cool. I actually rebought one of these in about 2002 um, when I was working at Automobile, my first stint at Automobile. And I had it, my, um, my now ex drove it for I think three years. And she learned to drive a stick on it. And it was a good, still great, reliable, super fun car to drive. Why'd you sell it? The other one? Um, it sat in the car and driver lot. My, uh, we bought another car and then it sat in the car and driver lot and somebody left a note on it offering me three grand for it. So I said, yes, come give me three grand for this car that I paid four grand for. Nice. Yeah, he, these are the Recaro seats, like huge bolsters. Yeah, it was super fun. I jumped it a couple times. Did yours have a stereo? No, no, it had the stock stereo in it. I didn't, I didn't mess with any of that. Well, I mean, this yeah. one looks like it has no stereo. Yeah, here's the key. So it had this really fancy, cool two-piece key with a little cover. <laughs> that is That's fancy. so cool. Um, but yeah, it was a special car. They didn't make a lot of them, and you know, a lot of them don't exist anymore. But I, you can occasionally find them on forums. They occasionally, like this one popped, this really nice one popped up about two and a half years ago. So you didn't find one for sale now? Uh, just this Montana Metallic one for 8,500 bucks. Okay. But it's, okay. And then okay. there, you can also find them in Europe too. This is a four door one in Germany. And then they're all over England. You can find them in England, but then you often end up with wrong hand drive. So right. non-starter for me. Yeah. So that's my car. All right, cool. All right, cool. we're gonna hop to Ezra next. Ezra Dyer is a senior editor. Based in North Carolina, how you doing, Ezra? I'm doing well, um, and I'm gonna hop right to sharing the screen. And uh, no, it's not the Subaru in the background. It's the sweet '85 IROC right there. That was my first car. Very nice. And uh, I bought it from a uh, Catholic priest. So wow. when I bought it, it had this license plate on it. <laughs> <laughs> What made you want an IROC Z? Uh, why wouldn't you want an IROC Z? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I thought it was cool looking. And for the day, what you could afford, it was one of the fastest things you'd get your hands on. That was relatively recent. What motor um, did they have in it? Was that five liter? Uh, it was the five liter TPI. Um, the TPI was 215 horsepower. There was a carbureted one that was, or throttle body or something that was 190 horsepower. You couldn't get the manual transmission with the better engine. So nice. at least despite the fact that I had an automatic, it had the better engine. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I replaced that uh, vanity plate with this one, which uh, read, eat me in your rear view mirror. <laughs> uh, and fun fact, that was my last vanity plate until this one that I just got for my boat trailer. Nice. Good exclamation point. Exclamation mark is great. Yeah, you get punctuation. Um, so, uh, there, the IROC is actually having a little bit of a moment. There was just one on Bring a Trailer, like last week. So let's look at that. And I think it was, okay, it was bid to 21500 Didn't sell because it's <laughs> obviously worth more than that. <laughs> this one only has 3,000 miles, but it's basically the same spec as mine. Beautiful. Now. Uh, fun IROC trivia, um, Bob Boniface from GM told me that um, the front fender here was designed on one of the first CAD programs, uh, and the rears were done with clay, like the old-fashioned way, and that's why they don't really match. Right. But uh, the front is more, it's more prominent, and I think it looks like a sharper crease, and then the rear is kind of a softer curve. But they said, you know what, we like the way it looks, we're going to go with that. Um, Yours was an 85 as well? Mine was an 85 as well, yeah. The first year, 215 horsepower TPI. You could have either that or the 190 horsepower non-TPI motor. But that uh, gave you the manual. Yeah, this, the, as usual with GM in those days, you could have the automatic with the better engine or the manual with the, uh, the, manual with the lesser power because apparently they didn't know how to build a manual that would handle the... Well, they didn't want it to compete with the Corvette, which only had 240 horsepower at the time. Well, I think at this point, the Corvette had two, oh, you know, yeah, the, right, the Corvette had 240, but when they put the Corvette engine in the IROC, they detuned it to 230. Right. So it was really pretty close. Like you could get the, the 350 with 230 horsepower or the 215 horsepower uh, five liter. And they were essentially the same thing. It was pretty much just bragging rights, but um, yeah, this one, no T-tops. This one has the gold, gold trim, mine had silver. Oh man, that interior, that looks just as crappy as mine did. <laughs> oh, well, what's the red line? It's not very high. No, but, no, no, but they included a lot of extra numbers. So that's what's important. <laughs> so yeah, the red line was 5,000 or started at you know, 5,500. But it went all the way to 7,000 just in case. Just in case, yeah. Um, speedometer only went to 85, but um, through some uh, high school algebra, I deduced based on RPM and uh, gearing and whatnot that top speed was probably 140. Wow. Um, Did you I go that old. fast? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, had it, it, I had it at 4,000 RPM in overdrive. So whatever in that depth, was, yeah. was out to is right there. Forth. Um, I got pulled over so many times that the cops all knew the car so well that I got pulled over once from be, I was following a cop. And he signaled, he turned his lights on and then signaled me to pull in front of him because he had seen my car in a parking lot locally and saw the tires were burned off it and wanted to write me a ticket for the tires. But haha, I'd gotten new tires in like the day before. <laughs> so he was forced to let me go. Um, the car would also hit second gear so hard that uh, one time the back end broke loose on a like off pulling away from a stop sign and I uh, went toward the ditch and I caught it. But a cop coming the other way saw that and pulled me over and wanted to search the car and know if I was drunk. And I was like, hey man, if I were drunk, I'd be in that ditch. <laughs> because I just caught that thing. And uh, yeah, that was, my, that was my first car. And they're, they're coming back around. This dealership wants $30,000 for this. And uh, how many miles are on that one? I'd love to give it to them. Uh, 3,000. Oh, it's a brand new car. 3,000. 3,000? 3,000? 3,000, and it apparently has the original tires, not that you want them. Yeah, those look like VR50s, the Gator Bats. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So. That's awesome. That's mine. I had the Ooh, trunk part here filled with subwoofers. Uh, All right. Well, thanks. There. Thank you, Ezra. Awesome. Right. Let's go next to uh, Rich Seppos.
Rich, Rich is the head of our buyer's guide. Rich, uh, what did you find? What were you looking for? Well, when I was a, uh, a pimply-faced adolescent, I was very lucky to have a mom who had a car that was like this. This is a 66 GTO. I, I, my mom had a 67, which was virtually identical, but for the taillights. I just grabbed this one because it, it was a good photo uh, of this car. It emphasizes its, its length and its sleekness. Um, this car in its day was uh, pretty, pretty fast. It had a 400 cubic inch engine, 335 horsepower. Um, my mom's uh, had a, a three-speed turbo hydromatic automatic uh, limited slip differential and a 293 rear end, and it made it a really great street racer for a kid who had no idea how to street race. All he had to do was stomp the throttle, and it took off really, really well, and, and I'd beat a lot of cars that should have beat me. And, uh, uh, and it was very fast on the top end, too. We would, we would take it down to the beach road uh, near our house and, and uh, do some top speed runs and run it up to 120, and then put the brakes on, uh, to try to slow down, at which point it, you realized it had just terrible brakes and you had no brakes by 70 it miles had, an hour. It had drum brakes in the front, right? Yeah, they were like seven inch drum brakes. They were tiny, undersized little brakes. And, you know, but we didn't know any better. We just, you know, we just knew that was going to happen. But it was really, really cool. I would buy one of these again because my theory is if you're going to have a toy, you should always uh, have a convertible. And I got a couple of old cars and they're both convertibles because. These things really aren't worth driving except on nice days. Uh, are, are the coupes worth more than the convertibles or the convertibles? You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, all I know is these, looking for these, uh, there's plenty of GTOs uh, available on all kinds of sites for between 45 and this is not really the high end 79, but this is a beautiful one, um, beautifully restored. Uh, these things had nice interiors. I would I would buy one today with a, a manual transmission just because it's more engaging to drive. But they rumbled really good. They're probably slow by today's standards, but they sure felt fast back in the day. It was a 15-second quarter mile car, though, wasn't it? It was around. Yeah, it was around that. I I don't remember the exact numbers. Um, this one has air conditioning, just like my mom's had. Um, my mom was not the little old lady from Pasadena. She, uh, she never would drive over 50 miles an hour. Uh, and I don't remember her ever putting the top down. She always ran the air conditioning. I, on the other hand, never put the top up. And uh, uh, so it was, it was really great and it, uh, really a fun car to have. I mean, there was so much street racing in that muscle car era. You pull up to a stoplight, look over, there'd be a guy in a road runner, light turned green and you just, you just go. And, uh, uh, this was really a DeLorean. Delor this was a DeLorean was at Pontiac when this car was being done. I believe he was still at Pontiac at the time. He, he ultimately moved to Chevrolet where our former editor publisher, David E. Davis, was his creative director at Campbell Ewald. Nice. The other thing I did with this was I took it to an autocross event. And in those days, the autocross event was uh, populated by people who like sports cars. So there were only Triumphs and uh, little Porsche Speedsters and and MGs there, and I I came rumbling in with this this giant muscle car, and they were looking at me like I was crazy, and I was determined to show them, you know, that these cars would be really good on an autocross course. So uh, I sh what I ended up showing was how good it could burn rubber up to the first <laughs> gate, and then how good it could spin out, because I immediately spun out scattered cones everywhere tried to find the course, couldn't find the course, drove around like I was drunk, and then was so embarrassed. Uh, I Did you just I go home? Immediate, immediately. It was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, was scar I was scarred for a life, really. I didn't go back and do a competitive event until, that was, that was when I was in high school, and I didn't do a competitive event again until after I had gone to the Bondurant school and learned some basic driving techniques. But uh, no, uh, a muscle car was not suited to an autocross, nor was I. So I have a lot of fun, fun, fun memories of these cars, and they, they really were the sexy, um, uh, considered, uh, you know, the, the, the top uh, by most people who, who didn't know much, you know, the top muscle cars of the day, even though 454 Chevelles and Stage 2 uh, Buick uh, Brand Sports were, were better. But, but those cars uh, were relatively rare to a GTO, right? 
Well, there, yeah, there were rare. There were five of these in my neighborhood. I had to borrow my mom's um, to, to use it, which I did all the time. If she just needed a bottle of milk, I was happy to uh, tear down to the store and burn some rubber along the way. But there were five of them. And for some reason, I don't understand, my car was always the fastest, no matter who was driving it. We'd swap cars, my car would win the drag race. So uh, I was a pretty happy kid. I did What's that third it. tab that you have open there? What, what's that? What's that extra tab? Oh, have? well, that's, that's an older one. That's a 64 GTO, the original year. And that's, I just put that there to, to remind myself what I would do if I hit the lottery and, and wanted to spend 100 or 150 grand. I'd buy something that looked like that and, okay. and put a lot of modern mechanicals underneath it, uh, Art Morris and chassis and rear wheel tubs and big wheels and tires and disc brakes and a, a giant 455 Pontiac engine blown up to 600 horsepower or something and have a, a, a car they call a pro touring kind of version. It's what people do with 69 Camaros, right. but they're beautiful. And I, I kind of like that style for, for that kind of car. But the, the 67s were sleek and, and in their day, you know, they, they were pretty cool. And I was a really, really lucky it's the kid. the monkey mobile, isn't it? What's that? The monkey mobile, isn't it? That's, you are correct, Tony. It, the, 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 the monkeys uh, made some crazy looking uh, hot rod out of that for their show. Yeah, I think Ferris did it or something. And they lip synced everything, so we didn't like that. <laughs> did your parents wonder about tire wear? Well, I'll tell you, before I got my license, they had this car before I got my license, and so I would volunteer to babysit because I would build my entire evening about uh, backing it down to the end of the driveway, doing a big burnout, zipping into the garage, closing the garage door real fast. And that was my whole night. <laughs> That was my whole night. And then, you know, I'm, I think I burned the tires off in 4,000 miles or so. My mother, of course, in her innocence, had no idea. And so nothing has changed, Rich. Nothing. <laughs> I'm still stuck back then. I'm just, uh, I'm just faking the uh, adulthood part. All right. Well, good, good stuff. Good, great stories. We're going to move to Annie now. Annie, what have you got for us? What was your right. very first car? So my very first car was a 2006 Chevrolet HHR. Um, my parents bought this car for me, so they had a lot of say in what I got. I wanted, I remember the first car I wanted was a Volkswagen Beetle Turbo, which Ooh. there were a lot of available at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I had a bunch of other stuff I wanted, but my parents wanted me to have an American car um, with side airbags and ABS. The end of the day that HHR we ended up with only had the American car. There were no <laughs> cider packs and no ABS. Um, but it was this this 2008 one that I found here is basically my exact spec that I had. Oh. The orange paint, which was desirable because it was a limited edition color. And I really couldn't find very many orange ones when I was looking today. Of course, there's a dent here because the visibility is terrible in these cars. You can see almost nothing. Do you remember the name of that paint color? I I just looked it up. It's um no I don't remember. I can't remember. It's something good though. Um, and this interior when I was looking for these today I was imagining that my car had a much darker interior. But then I I realized it's because the guy who owned the car before me, he had it for a year and put sixty thousand miles on it. And in that year and sixty thousand miles, he left so much of himself in the car that the whole interior was just darker what did it smell like did it smell okay it smelled fine it smelled okay i mean i would it wasn't i wouldn't recommend it but, <laughs> but it was just fine <laughs> the other thing i so I, I ended up owning a different hhr a few years after this i had this hhr until um, i got my first job in the car industry years later I ended up with a second HHR it sort of became a trait so people now send me HHRs all the time that they want me to buy and the one I would buy maybe is the HHR SS yes. yeah. which had a turbocharged 2 liter 260 horsepower um, car and driver tested, tested it at 6.3 seconds to 60 and there's just, a bunch of extra power kits for that engine too that they made for the Cobalt SS. Yeah, so just imagine how great that could have been. And, and it I has, think those those have manual transmissions too. Don't these, they? yeah, these do. Uh -huh. Yeah, right, right there. And it also has and automatic, these, but I, those definitely came with manual. Yeah, they came with manual. Right, it came with a manual. This has a boost gauge on 
the A pillar, which it's just ah. fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. But they, I mean, the one I had, it had all kinds of mechanical problems, including if you turn the steering wheel lock to lock twice, the power steering just completely shut off. And this was a, a feature, I guess, because it was listed in the owner's manual as something that would happen. But um, I tried to, I was trying to learn how to parallel park in this car. The power steering shut off and like my dad's off in the corner telling me what to do and I was sitting in there crying like it's so hard I can't Wait, do it. So GM engineered it that way? GM engineered it that way. Why? I cannot say. Now why an HHR over a PT Cruiser? <laughs> so I will say that when I was looking for cars it didn't even occur to me that these looked similar. Now Later, I guess. <laughs> so I was at the reveal totally of this. I was at the reveal of this car, and it was just soon after I started covering the auto industry. And I kept asking, like everybody, like other journalists, Bob Lutz, like all the executives. I kept being like, "Isn't that a PT Cruiser?" Like, I just, I was so confused. They're There's, so much yeah. the same. There's a familiarity there. I will. Also, the other, so the other reason is that uh, my grandfather owned a purple PT Cruiser which he loved. And I was just like, nah, the HHR, it's cool, it's young, it's hip. That's what I needed. <laughs> nice. Did you consider what the HHR or... stands for? HHR stands for, I do know, it's kind of embarrassing that I know. It stands for Heritage High Roof, which was the, it was like the first Suburban that Chevy did, what, in like the 50s or something. And this was supposed to be the reincarnation of the Heritage High Roof. Wow. Did you consider a panel version? I didn't consider a panel version at the time, but now as an appreciator of HHRs, I, I love them. As a connoisseur? <laughs> I'm a connoisseur, and I did actually find one. Oh! I found one. So this is pretty good. That one definitely is an accessibility. And that's, yeah, this is pretty cool. And I would also consider buying an HHR panel. I don't know why. I mean, the visibility was already so bad. Yeah. <laughs> and you can hold a lot of stuff in them, but not really so much that it makes sense for it to be a cargo van, but I would totally buy this. Can we see the side shot? Yeah, right there. It's so good. So it doesn't have doors. <laughs> this one, do no, it doesn't have doors. I don't think any of them do. I need four doors. It doesn't have rear doors. Right, it doesn't have rear doors. Right. I had a friend who had one of these, actually, and I'm trying to remember if hers had doors or not. I don't, I can't There remember. was a guy at, um, at the GM Tech Center who turned one of these into a, a hot rod kind of panel van like you would do with an old Ford panel van. He put steely wheels on it and painted it up in a way that it just it just looked old and it was it was actually really cool, Annie. So we think you should get one. Yeah. <laughs> You're Every a collector time I think already. About HHR, I'm reminded how much I love it. It just all comes rushing back. They're pretty <laughs> affordable. Yeah. Yeah, good deals. They're very good deals. I mean, all right. It's cool. not a great deal when you think about how cheap they were to start, but Right, that's true. Anyway. <laughs> All right, thanks, Annie. So now we're going to move to Drew. Drew Dorian, what have you got for us today, Drew? Hi, so um, I, like Rich, also had a John DeLorean designed car for my first car. Nice. Um, can you see my screen there? Yeah, yep. look at that. So, yeah, I had this 1969 Grand Prix. Uh, it was originally owned by my uncle. He had bought it and fixed it up, and uh, it was it was a bit of a wreck, but it was cool. Uh, he let his each of his kids, uh, my cousins, drive it as their first car, so that was um, kind of like a family tradition. So when they each got their own car, because <laughs> this thing only got like you know six miles to the gallon, so as soon as they could get modern cars, I think they they did. Uh, so as soon as they had all kind of aged out of it, he uh, he handed it over to me. And I got to drive it for a little while until it finally died and we had to rebuild it. And <laughs> was, it was it reliable while you owned it? Did it start every time? Not per not particularly. Yeah, it started most of the time, but it wasn't it wasn't particularly reliable, no. Like it, and you it, drove it, it through the winter too? Oh yeah. In Michigan. Um it was it was an interesting car. This is uh this is a, a similar color to mine. I don't think mine was an original color. Um he had had it painted. Um, it had a, a 400 cubic inch V8. Ooh. Um, it was it was very fast for how big it is, but you know this was actually considered a mid-size car back then, even yeah. though 
it was huge. Um, this one in particular uh, has, I think it's probably vinyl. It could be leather, but I doubt it. No, uh, vinyl, vinyl. Interior. Mine was actually uh, paisley velvet in green. <laughs> oh, nice. From the factory? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, when we rebuilt the engine, I, I'm not sure which kind of car was the donor engine originally, but we, we made sure to paint it the original, like, Pontiac. Pontiac. Um, oh, nice. My dad was, like, pretty insistent that we, like, keep that one thing like true true to the car yeah um so yeah we rebuilt it me and my dad and my younger brother jason and uh we got it running again in the meantime while it was down and we were trying to fix it up i had found a uh 69 volkswagen beetle mm -hmm. which was way more of my thing uh yeah. and so i bought that and i was driving that and then when this was back up and running i kind of was really in love with the beetle so i kept the beetle and we sold this how long did you drive the Pontiac for? Uh, I would say like about a year. Um, this was like right after I got my driver's license. So it would have been like 1999, 2000 timeframe. Um, it was a very roomy car. It had an eight track player that didn't really work. Sometimes it, would eight play, sometimes it wouldn't. What eight tracks did you have? I had one eight track that came with the car and it was an Aerosmith eight track. Which nice. I'm not even a really big fan of Aero Aerosmith, but that's all I had. So. Nice. Oh, God. Yeah. How did it handle? Because from that underhood shot, it looks like it's actually mid-engine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it didn't handle well at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this probably weighed as much as like two of Tony's GTIs. It was huge. So they're, they were called gas too. So I had to have lead additive in the trunk, and I used to have. Oh, to, really? To add that in every time oh. I'd fill up. Yeah. Wow. Did and it have a vinyl top? A lot. I'm sorry? Did it have a vinyl top? A lot of these had vinyl tops. Nope, it didn't. It had the regular hard top. And it had these windows. They were power, but the little half windows, there was no pillar. So when you rolled them both down, it was nice and open like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty stylish, I got to say. Yeah, pretty cool. So, so right. it was sold after you rebuilt it. It was gone. Yeah, sold it. Yeah. Rebuilt the engine, got it running, and failed <laughs> cashed out <laughs> look this right. one's just in plymouth you could go get it i know it's the same blue <laughs> ship actually that that uh rich had his gto that red gto oh, nice. Jeez, thirty nine thousand dollars there were less expensive ones that i could find out there but they weren't this nice and this one was the closest uh in terms of how mine looked Color Drew, you, you don't have any photos of your your car I do somewhere. I cannot find it. I think it might be at my, my parents' house. Um, and it's, if I can find it, I'll show it to you guys. It's really embarrassing. I'm like posing with it. Nice. Very we love photos like that. That's, that's why we're not seeing them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, I would show you if I could find it. I, I literally don't know where it is. I looked for it earlier. So. so shall we move to mine? My Now that we've seen actually good ones, we can move to my crummy little car. Um, Actually, not crummy. It was fun to drive. Mine was a 1984 Honda Civic hatchback. Looked just like this one. Uh, Civic S is what it was called. Those are good looking. Yeah. They're yeah. great. Clean. Super clean design. Great car. Yeah. Um, I encountered one at the Honda Museum in Japan, which was nice. I took a picture of it there. Um, but they're hard to find in real life. This was mine. That was the actual color of mine. Oh, wow. What was it called? You said your sister? Yeah, called? yeah. The, it was, the color is Victoria Red, but my sister nicknamed it The Stain. Oh. So, but that was just our name for the car. <laughs> <laughs> not very flattering. But I should say back, I should back up a little bit. I did not get this car in pristine condition. Um, it was my parents had friends who had moved to Scotland and they tried to sell the car before they left. And then it was just like sitting, I think in our, I think in our driveway. Um, and then when the time was up for the registration, they were just like, ah, we don't want it. So I got it for the cost of the registration. So it cost 200 bucks. Wow. What a deal. Yeah, it was a good deal. But uh, you know, there were many things wrong with it by the time it got to me, um, including no one disclosed this at the time and we didn't pick up on it. The front wheels were the wrong size. Um, the guy who had owned it had bought some just used and so they were like I don't know two inches too small or something and they uh, oh. 
So we would, it had a speed limiter on it just because of that. You'd get to 55 and the whole thing would just start shaking like this. So it wasn't as much fun. I think that these cars were actually fun, new, and like if they had been maintained well, but my version was more of a, you know, it's really in a death trap kind of feeling. Did you ever go past 55 to see if, to see if things improved? I, you know, I actually, when we got the new wheels put on, um, I was able to go 65, 70, and I was just like a freaking dream. Um, <laughs> so that was <laughs> yeah, but those got good. Those got good fuel economy, those cars. Yeah, but it was the 90s. Nobody cared about fuel economy in the yeah, 90s. Right. Gas was oh. like 25 cents a gallon. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but this is the one that I could find, the only one I could find um, that's actually like around the same model. This is, uh, they're asking $1,600, which I think is about $1,500 too much. Um, this one is, uh, you know, that's. Why do you think they specify driven 80,000 miles? What other things could it have done over 80,000 miles? <laughs> Great question. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, it, it looks like there's some animals maybe lived in this engine bay. Yeah. But, you know. It's a rough one. Yeah. But you had a stick? I did have a stick, yeah. This is what I learned to drive stick. Well, no, actually, I learned to drive stick on a different car, but this is where I perfected uh, driving stick. I really, um, I ground the gears on this one pretty well. But it was, you know, it kind of, it was, it was a $200 car. Um, it was perfect for what I needed it for. It moved me in and out of my dorm room at college. Um, this, I, this, I found a, the brochure. So there's that. You can find more brochures and stuff online. But the thing that I found that I really would buy was this Grateful Dead sticker that I had that I put in the window. <laughs> I was not a druggie at all. I wasn't even really into the Grateful Dead. I just saw this somewhere, like probably in some like incense and candle shop. And I thought it was really pretty. I didn't fully understand what it was. So I, I had it upside down because I had the three mushrooms up top. I, had, I got a lot of questions about the sticker. The police pull you over a lot because of that? <laughs> I did get pulled over a fair amount. <laughs> <laughs> buy it now, Sharon. Click on the buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> now that I look back, I'm like, I was so, like, I was just, like, naive. Like, I didn't really understand yeah. what that was. But anyway, so this is the best I could find. I really couldn't find much else. In the How long did you own it? I owned it for two years, and then it went to my sister, and then it went to my sister's best friend, and then wow. it went to her dad. Wow. Is it still in service? It is not, no. Oh, it, was, wow. it was, so I got it in 93, and I think it was in service till like 2002. Wow. Yeah, I think the only thing that kills those is rust. Yeah, and it was New Jersey, so it got pretty, it got pretty rusty. So. That's awesome. Yeah. So that is my, those are my shares. Okay, so let's move to the most exciting uh, part of this, the verdict. Which cars of the ones that we all just saw would any of us actually buy? Which I'm not sure, I'm not sure there are any that we would buy. <laughs> but let's start with Rich's Pontiac GTO. What do we feel about that? We feel wonderful. We buy. I love it. It's a great car. Yeah. I don't have yeah. that kind of money. If you're gonna buy an older Pontiac, that's probably the one to buy, not the Grand Prix. You might want to get a disc brake conversion, Rich. If you get oh it. yeah, you got to do a little bit to it, but you don't have to buy an eighty thousand dollar one. You could buy a forty thousand dollar one. And there's plenty of good ones. I say yes, it's good. Okay. Strong. All right, then we got Tony's uh, VW GTI. Oh yeah. Wait. Oh yeah, it's a great one. car. Great car. Yeah. I think you got to find that one in that Montana green, though, because that's a really cool color. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then Annie's Chevy HHR. I'm sorry, Annie. No. I, it, would, uh, I would maybe buy the SS. If it's sorry, SS. I'm sure it's sideways. You know, you know what? I'm going to go thumbs up on that, because I was looking at that, and I was thinking, that's actually not a bad, your parents were right. That's not a bad teenage driver car. It's not. <laughs> That's the thing. Once you start thinking about it, it all starts making sense. <laughs> well, I mean, if they'd gone with the ABS and the airbags, it probably would have made more sense. It's a great yeah, learning but, tool. Yeah. But you don't want to, I don't want to think about it. You should have gotten the Beetle Turbo. <laughs> yeah, that's what you should get. Okay, then we got Drew's 1969 Pontiac Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> 
go either way on that one. If I he didn't want that, I'll go for Drew's money. Game. I would maybe buy one to give to my brother because we sold it before he had a chance to get his license and enjoy it. So maybe I, maybe I owe him that. Ooh. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sentimental reasons, though. Yeah. All right, and then we've got my 19. Either we could go for my Honda Civic hatchback 1984 version or the sticker. <laughs> I think I'm a thumbs up on the sticker. The sticker. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I liked your car. <laughs> I like my car too. It just it's, it didn't last. It didn't to stand the test of time. <laughs> they've they've been driven pretty hard. So I'll get the sticker. Yeah. Ezra's car? Did we vote on Ezra? Oh right. Sorry, Ezra's car. <laughs> Iraq. Well, of course. Yes. Yeah. Coming back, baby. Yeah. I wish I had more thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> Just not for me. All right, guys, thank you for joining me again with another Window Shop with us. We will be back on Tuesday. Bye, guys. Thanks. See ya. Yeah.